Hashmap Megabytes. Hello, and welcome to another Hashmap Megabytes. Uh, today I want to talk about Snowflake roles, which can be a somewhat confusing part uh, to new Snowflake users and can be really easy to mess up because it does give you so much flexibility. So let's jump right into some code here. Um, normally I like to run code live for everyone, but I have run some of this ahead of time. Uh, I'll explain why a little later down, but for now let's walk through this. So in Snowflake you have different Snowflake objects. These are things that uh, would be like databases or tables or warehouses uh, that exist. And out of the box, a user cannot access any of these objects that you may create. Uh, to access these, you can't grant permissions directly on these objects to users. You need to use something called roles. Uh, roles, they're kind of similar to groups in other um, identity management systems, but they, they also perform uh, some other functions. So uh, in Snowflake, you have out of the box some default roles, and those would be sysadmin, security admin, account admin, uh, the new user admin, which exists, and then you have public. Um, a, a, Across the range of those, they're mostly just admin access with public being a default role that people get when they're first created. Hopefully, you don't give them anything. But when you're actually designing real Snowflake use cases, real things in Snowflake, uh, this is the typical pattern that I see used. Uh, first, we would start with creating the top level objects. And in this case, that would be our um, databases. Uh, and we're going to keep it simple. Today, I'm using a, a kind of a movie example. So from two movies that I like, Django Unchained, which is a Quentin Tarantino film, and then Wolf of Wall Street, which is a Martin Scorsese film. Um, so first, we would create these databases. You can run this. Uh, it'll work fine in your environment. Um, and then we switch to security admin. You'll notice sysadmin is really where you want to create objects, non-user, non-role Object. So that's mostly warehouses and databases. Um, and then everything that is kind of hold, held within a database um, can either be created by some sub admin role that owns the database space, or you can continue to use the sysadmin. But top level objects that can't be created from inherited permissions, that's going to be a database and a warehouse, that gets created by sysadmin. Next, we uh, switch roles here to security admin. Um, and I still use security admin to create users and uh, roles. Um, but the, the new user admin, I, I guess, is designed to be able to create some users and perform some of those activities. So um, use what you think is best. I think security admin makes sense for both roles and users. So we'll create these users. I created these ahead of time. Um, but these are the two actors, or, or sorry, the two directors from these previous films. And then this is a list of cast members across both films. These are, these are actors. So right away, this feels, I think, probably pretty intuitive to most uh, new people to Snowflake that you have databases and you have users. But how do you wire up access, specifically when you have different levels of access? That's where the roles come in. So down here, we will, um, again, use security admin to create our roles. And I advise you to use um, regular patterns when naming your, uh, your, your access roles. And that's really what these are. These are object access roles. That's not a defined thing in Snowflake. It's just a general best practice where you have business function and object access roles. Um, by splitting things up that way, you're able to make your content more readable because roles are really the, the easiest way to explore who has access to what. It's a lot harder to dive in to see exactly what different roles have. So first, we're going to create the Django Unchained actor and director. And then we have the Django Unchained, that database. It's read access and then read and write. Uh, I typically combine um, broad level access to these specific areas um, or to the schema level. If you're going down to the table level, that could be a different discussion. But there's lots of valid ways to strategize this. Uh, you should have it ahead of time, though, if you're going to create roles that are going to um, make it easy for you to maintain rather than harder. And then we do the same thing. We have actor and director. That's a business function role where we're describing what someone does. And then we have object access roles, which has read access to that database and read and write. Next, uh, we grant everything to the sysadmin. This is something that you should do as a best practice. Because uh, if you don't manually grant this to sysadmin, sysadmin stops having the ability to do administrative tasks. It stops being a useful role to use. Um, and Snowflake makes this an optional thing, but I find it's always best whenever you create a role, go ahead and grant it to the sysadmin immediately. And then we'll build our hierarchy. So the actor, we start kind of here, should have read access. This is just something I'm kind of making up. And then the director is going to have read and write access. Um, and then to make our role permissioning easier, we grant the read role directly to our read and write role here. Uh, so that it kind of builds this hierarchy, this, this uh, directed graph of relationships. And then we do the same thing for Wolf of Wall Street. 
And then we actually grant the permissions. Uh, this is maybe a lot to read, and I don't know that it's super important for our purposes, but what I'm doing here is giving the Django Unchained read role access to read everything that exists in that database and everything that will exist in that database. And then I do the same thing for the write, except I just append the write permissions because it will inherit these read roles, uh, these, these read privileges. And then I do the exact same thing for Wolf of Wall Street here. Uh, these have already been run, uh, mind you. And now I grant to our users. And this feels, I think, more intuitive. Once you split your business function from your object access, we just need to ask ourselves, who is Quentin Tarantino? Well, he's, he's a director for Django Unchained. That's really easy. So we just grant that role to the user. Martin Scorsese also um, becomes a director. And then down here, we'll do the Django Unchained cast uh, all the way through. And interestingly, Quentin Tarantino does show up as an actor as well in the film. He makes a, an appearance um, in like the later half of the film. So he's also an, act he's an actor and a director. Um, and then down in Wolf of Wall Street, we notice that Leonardo DiCaprio, he acts in both of these films, and so does Jonah Hill. Um, so we have this kind of nested, uh, in intricate access web that we manage through these business function roles. Uh, and then let's explore these roles. So this is where I can actually run a little code and show you what this looks like. Today in Snowflake, there is not a visual way to explore your roles. And there are two major use cases that I find are really common when you're doing this kind of security investigation. The first is I wanna see what a user can access. I have a specific user in mind and I wanna see what can they access. This might be debugging an access issue where someone should have access to something and they don't or it's just some sort of audit practice. So first, um, I'm gonna show users as the security admin here. And this will show all my users. And this is um, one of our uh, less used accounts. So we have a few actual people in here uh, from HashMap, but most of this are, are just the actors and directors of these two films. So I can see all of them here and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is right here. So let's go ahead and investigate him. And we're going to show all the grants that he has. And these would be uh, role grants, roles that he can uh, leverage. So we have actor of Django Unchained and actor of uh, Wolf of Wall Street. The tricky part here is that this data is presented to you in a tabular format, something kind of like a, a, a spreadsheet, but the data is fundamentally not spreadsheet nature. It is uh, a graph, an undirect, or it is a directed graph uh, that is potentially cyclic, so it gets really complex. Um, so to actually find out what access he has, I need to find out what access does this actor role have. So I'll show grants to that actor. And I can see that it has read access. And this is why the powerful repeated pattern of naming what your roles can do help you. Because if I know that I always make Django Unchained read, have specific levels of access to this whole thing, I don't need to go further. Um, but if, for example, I don't have good practices, I do still need to see what that role can, can do. And I see that it has usage on the database and usage on this public schema. There are no tables in here, but as tables are added, you would see additional uh, select privileges show up here. Uh, so that's the Django Unchained, but now I have to remember, okay, go back. Okay, that we, we went down this one. Let's go down Wolf of Wall Street actor and see what access they have there. And this is a really simple example. Um, we have read, and I can see again usage and usage. Uh, this is a simple example that still takes kind of a lot of time to investigate. You can imagine it a real world scenario that has warehouses in the mix and has uh, lots of different schemas, different tables, and uh, different business function roles for a person that this would be really time consuming and it'd be hard to confirm that the access you think this person should have is the access they actually have. Uh, so that's one half of kind of role investigation. The other half is starting with an object and trying to find out who in my uh, Snowflake instance can actually access that object. So that process, um, we start with looking at schemas. I'm going to look in Django Unchained uh, and I'm going to explore the public schema. I want to find out who can access this object. Uh, and, and you can imagine if this were um, uh, highly sensitive data that it would be really important for me to ensure only certain people can access this data. Um, now let's look, and, and you'll notice that the syntax is slightly different. Instead of seeing, uh, using show grants to, I'm using show grants of. So I'm gonna see grants of this Django Unchained read role because down here I can see that the read role has access to public. The other one is sysadmin, that's an admin role. That makes sense, I don't need to explore that. Um, that's kind of the nature of creating things, uh, is that anything you create in a role, you will own. So Django Unchained read, let's check this out. Okay, so this fans out. Sysadmin can use this, that's fine, but then we have read, write, and then we have actor. Uh, so exploring read, write, we have director, so then we have to explore, um, going back, we explore the actor, and we can see all these users have access to the actor 
uh, roll for Django Chain. This is really the cast. Uh, and then also this roll, sysadmin can use this. And then going back to the director here. But what we don't have is a single table here that shows everyone in one spot that has access to this. Um, that's very difficult. And that makes exploring your role uh, access and your access to objects um, painful in Snowflake. This is not a built-in process. So what we can use instead is this Snowflake database. This is a metadata store that has account usage and they have tons of tables in here um, that actually historically store the different access levels that you have across multiple tables. Uh, and you can query these like just normal SQL tables. The problem is that they're rather slow to query because of the way that they're shared to you. They also have latency problems. So the reason that I created everything up front earlier on is that if I want to do this next step, I have to have created it maybe an hour or two in advance so that this uh, area is up to date with my new roles and users. So that's kind of doing things manually. Let's go ahead and switch and do things a little more interactively. So uh, I'm gonna use account admin out of the box. This is the only role that can access this space. Um, but you can grant that to lower privileges, uh, lower lower uh, roles if you want. Uh, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and pick a warehouse. Pick whatever warehouse you have to use, but use an extra small. Uh, the reason I say that is that a lot of the time that will be taken by this warehouse to compute isn't based on like some complex computing. It's just the latency here. So having larger warehouses, is just it's just going to spend more money. It's not actually going to run significantly faster. So I'm using an extra small. And then I have a somewhat complex query here, lots of nested CTEs. And the basics is that I'm going into this, uh, this role, grants to roles table and pulling out basically the source node and the destination node of the graph. So we have um, basically what the privilege is granted on and who it's granted to. And that's for role grants. And then we also have user grants, which are slightly different. Um, where I'll do the same thing and then I'll union those and I'll build JSON out of this and I'll show you why I'm doing JSON here. So I'll run this query and you shouldn't be surprised if this query takes 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes depending on your instance and it's because of that slowdown here. I am on a completely fresh instance and I've noticed that this uh, query can take a minute, maybe two minutes um, to run. So we'll let this run really quick um, but the end result will be a single row that will be an array of JSON objects. Um, and, and the reason it's JSON is because at HashMap, we've decided like this is a painful process to do manually exploring these roles. And there's some really common patterns that no matter where you're at, you kind of want to explore uh, visually. So uh, we can copy these results really quickly. And even if you have really large number of results here, you can click on this and copy here. It doesn't matter which one you copy. Uh, and then go to our, this new website we set up. It's snowflakeinspector.com. Um, completely free. It's just a, a thing we're kind of open sourcing and building to the community so you can visualize these role relationships. So this is a, a default role that we have as soon as you come here if you want to play around with things. But let's actually visualize some of this data. Um, here is the query I just ran. Uh, the difference is that in my query, I cut out um, names that aren't part of our example. I cut out my own name and some other admins that we have in this instance. But you can come here, copy that query, run it in your instance, and then copy the results and paste it back here. And we now can visually explore some of the access levels we have. So some of those questions we had before, like Quentin Tarantino, what can he access as a user? If I click on him, it highlights all the way down the usage chain. Um, and, and this is a work in progress, so we're going to keep editing this. We're going to add some more visualizations. We're going to add some actual uh, object access. So you can see the specific objects that they're accessing right now just goes down to the role level. Um, and we'll also add a bunch of filters. But I find that this is a much easier way to ensure that Quentin Tarantino is not the director of Wolf of Wall Street. That's really useful. Um, I can also see that Martin Scorsese has no access at all to anything in Django. And then some of our more interesting uh, actors, they have access to um, both movies as actors, but they can't write anything. Um, so I I'll leave this to other people to explore. You can interact with this um, by running, running this script on your own. Uh, but this is kind of how we propose to help address the pain of designing secure role hierarchies that you can still audit and visually explore and kind of debug on your own. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribe for more HashMap content. HashMap Megabytes.